most collegiate stadiums in the country. The home fans will try and get the ship righted after a tough, tough week one. Oregon quarterback Jeremiah Basoli and first-year head coach Chip Kelly hope to get things done in their home opener. The best place in the country to play. It's the loudest place in the country to play. Um, I'm not sure uh, that Purdue will be ready for it. The Purdue Boilermakers are seeking revenge for last year's loss to the Ducks. Leading the charge from quarterback U is senior Joey Elliott. Looking to greats Len Dawson, Bob Greasy, and Drew Brees. Purdue and Oregon, Pac-10 against Big Ten on Cottage. There'll be 54,000 crazies on hand, another sellout crowd, of course, at Autzen Stadium. But tonight, it's a little bit less of a celebration and a little bit more of a trial. They want to know what Oregon team's going to show up. The one picked second to Pac-10 Conference, or the one that didn't show up last week in Boise. It's Oregon and Purdue in Eugene. Presented by Phillips HD. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with my partner, Petros Papadakis. And Petros Jeremiah Masoli off game last week. We've seen that before, but we've also seen him bounce back. Well, everybody in the country knows that Jeremiah Masoli struggled last week in Boise, but can he bounce back? He can if they do the right things with him. He is comfortable running the football. He really has a linebacker mentality. He's got a great arm, but he's not a comfortable pocket passer right now unless he gets those other parts of his game going. But he is a great leader. On the Purdue side, Ralph Bolden is electric. When dawn broke this morning, this guy was the leading rusher in the Big Ten. 200 plus yards against a pretty good Toledo team last week. He's looking to carry the load today for the Boilers. Yeah, so the Purdue running attack is a known quantity. Oregon's running attack is not. Who's going to fill the gap left by LeGarrette Blood? Of course, that suspension for the season after that ugly incident last week. Mike Leaves will tell us a little bit more about that when we come back to Eugene right after this. Sunset and what a beautiful day here in Eugene, Oregon. It's Purdue and Oregon right now. Let's go down to the sideline once more. Michael Eves with Oregon coach Chip Kelly. Michael. But Chip, considering how your offense struggled last week on the road, how important is it for your team tonight to get off to a good start early? Real important. We want to get some first downs, get on track, and stay on rhythm. Thanks for your time. Good luck tonight. Right, thanks, Mike. And they always play well here, Barry. As you know, at Austin Stadium, they've won their last four openers here in Eugene. And there, of course, the new coach, Danny Hope, of the Purdue Boilermakers in his second game, coming off a victory undefeated as the head coach. And we asked him how long the trip was for him. He said, not that long. All our guys were asleep on the airplane. And he said, 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the morning in West Lafayette, Indiana. Everybody's alive. That's just when they start get going. The Oregon Ducks won the toss, and they will defer the second half, so the Ducks will kick it away to the Purdue Boilermakers. Deep man for Purdue, Royce Adams. And this game is underway. And this is going to be Aaron Valentine. Back to the 15 to the 20. Gets a little gap across the 25 to the 26-yard line. 24-yard return for Valentine. And Joey Elliott, the senior quarterback, who has been around this program for a long time, sat and watched and learned. He's the son of a coach. And they say he was absolutely ready when asked to step in. Well, a lot of second string guys, they say, just kind of hang around and don't do what they have to do. But Elliott was into it the whole way, and now he's getting his opportunity. Three wide outs on first down for the Purdue Boilermakers. Bolden is the running back. They'll put it up on first down. Swing out of the backfield for Bolden. Take a look at our starting lineups. Uh, brought to you by Phillips HD. And the guy to watch there is Jared Zwilling. Came over from the defensive side of the ball. He is their most experienced player. We talked about Ralph Bolden. He's the leading rusher right now, or at least at the beginning of the day, as Petros mentioned, in the Big Ten Conference. 238 yards in his first game a week ago against Toledo. Second down and 10. And Elliott checking off. 
Listen to the crowd. Give to Bolden. Bolden doesn't get much. Stacked up in the middle of the line by Pacinger. Take a look at the Oregon defense once again, presented by Phillips HD. Tukwufu, Tukwafu rather, is the most experienced defensive line. And the Ducks have had to do some rebuilding. Pacinger, who just made that stop, very active, always around the football. And the secondary experienced at the corners, not so experienced at the safeties. This time out of the gun with an empty backfield. On third down and eight. Elliott straight back, four-man rush, steps up, throws underneath, incomplete, intended for the tight end, Kyle Adams. So three and out, pretty much what the Ducks would have wanted. Well, that's exactly what they needed. The Oregon Ducks just put into a terrible position defensively in Boise State last week. 91 defensive snaps, which is unheard of. Three and outs are going to help them, and that's exactly how they needed to start this football game. Chris Summers will do the punting. It'll be Walter Thurman the third, standing at the 31-yard line. They come after this, and they knock the punter down. It's going to be a flag, and Purdue's going to maintain possession. Thurman has dropped at about the 36-yard line, but more than one Oregon Duck ran right into the punter Summer. And you see the celebration of Chris Summers. Pretty excited that he was able to get knocked down there. Marvin Johnson was the guy that made the contact and drew the penalty, and that's got to be frustrating for Chip Kelly. Imperative that Oregon starts out fast in this football game. Now the penalty was running into the punter, so it may not be enough. In fact, it's going to be three yards short. So the Ducks kind of get a break here, as it was not roughing the kicker, but running into the kicker. Ducks do have the possibility of taking the play. The ball wound up. On the defense, number one. It's a five-yard penalty, fourth down. Ball wound up at the 37-yard line. Now let's see what the Ducks will do. Here's another look. You're going to see Marvin Johnson coming in on Summers. And he tried to hold him up. That, I believe, is the correct call. That's running into. That is not roughing. That was not a violent hit. Accidentally ran into him and tried to hold him up by his thigh. Well, they were coming after that. There were four Ducks coming hard at some. So they'll try it all over again. A little more protection this time. And this time the Ducks will play run back. Summers hits this really well. Turns it over, drives Thurman all the way back to the 12-yard line. Thurman up the gut, look out, 25 to the 30. Trying to get the outside, does. Finally knocked out from behind, he's across the 40-yard line. Return of 27 yards off that 54-yard kick. Royce Adams makes the stop for the Boilermakers. Jeremiah Masoli had uh, arguably his toughest game as a collegian. Remember this guy, even though he played a lot of games last year, he didn't play all of them. In fact, he did not play against Purdue when they played back in West Lafayette. So Masoli will come to the line of scrimmage. And to give this time is to Crenshaw. Now pass, I beg your pardon, for Mayo. And it's incomplete on the right side. They fake the give to Crenshaw. Now Crenshaw got the start. We're going to see all three running backs for the Oregon Ducks. LaMichael James, Kenyon, Barner, and Andre Crenshaw. Second down and 10 for the Ducks. And this time the give straight ahead to Crenshaw. Crenshaw driven back after a gain of a couple. It's going to be third down and eight. Andre Crenshaw is a back who really has earned the start in the absence of LeGarrette Blunt. He is a senior. He's been around a long time. Had a pretty good 2007. When healthy, he's a pretty good player. And he is 100% healthy right now in his senior year. Didn't get a lot of reps last year. This time to go with an empty backfield. Four receivers. Masoli now walks up under center, now backs up into the gun. Third down and seven. 
Masoli has to throw under pressure. It's incomplete. And the Ducks will go three and out. So not the kind of start that the Oregon Ducks would have wanted. And that's going to get some people nervous here in Autzen Stadium. They need to see this offense click on the cylinders that it was clicking on last year with Jeremiah Masoli getting physical and running the football. The first play of the drive I liked because Masoli was throwing it on the run, and that's where he's comfortable, but it was a drop by Jeff Mayo. And from there, it went downhill for the Ducks. See if their defense can bail them out again. Aaron Valentine going to be the deep man to receive this punt. High twisting kick. And Valentine makes the catch under pressure and is dropped immediately. Did well just to hold on to that ball. So we'll take a timeout. 12 minutes, 45 seconds remaining to be played here in the first quarter. We are scoreless. Pac-10 College Football Saturday is presented by Phillips HD. The images that move you the most are what we deliver the best. And brought to you in part by Ford. We speak car. We speak innovation. Introducing the all-new Taurus. Drive one. And by Best Buy. You happier. So Purdue will start at the 12-yard line. They go out of the eye formation. They ran a lot out of the eye last week. There's a pitch to Bolden, right side. Bolden cracked right as he got the line of scrimmage, but does manage to fall forward for about four yards. Casey Matthews hanging on for dear life. It's a good play by Casey Matthews, a six-foot, two-turner, 235-pound junior out of Agora Hills, California, of course, the famous Matthews family. But you saw the power and really kind of the churning of the legs of Ralph Bolden, who's under 200 pounds. But what a physical run. Not used to seeing Purdue in an eye formation running the football like that. This time they go out of the gun, Bolden the setback, second down and seven. Blitz comes, there's a little screen, flag is down, Carlos on a reception, big game across the 30 to the 34-yard line, but let's see about the flag. Spencer Pacinger makes the tackle on the sideline, a gain of 19, but it may be for naught. So the Boilermakers will walk backward. On the offense, five men in the backfield, five yard penalty. Danny Hope, a guy who came over from Eastern Kentucky as the heir apparent last year to work under Joe Tiller. A guy who's very confident, a guy who really knows what he's talking about, knows his football. They say he's a great recruiter, and he is. They also know his toughness. He's an offensive line guy, and he really does believe in the virtues of practicing fast, telling his team when practice is going to be over, because the games he say sets are so fast you have to practice quickly and that's what Purdue's done and they're out there playing pretty quick tonight. Purdue a very confident team coming in here. Second down and 12. Out of the gun once more. Elliott straight back out all day to throw it. Now he throws intercepted. Picked off and across the 15 to 17 he loses the football and finally falling on it for the Oregon Ducks. Matthews recovered the ball. Take a look here. We'll see. He He's going to come pick. right here. Just backing off, showing blitz. And Elliott never saw him. What a great play by Casey Matthews to get up and make that play with those big shoulder pads on. Loses the football because he's not used to running it. So a big break for the Ducks. And the Ducks now at the 13-yard line. Well, Michael James, the running back for the first time in this game. Just a freshman. He can scoot. And whistles blow, and we might have too much time here. It's something you don't see happen to the Ducks very much. There's no foul on the play. Timeout, Oregon, number one. Got the timeout called before the play clock ran down. So a little bit of a rugged start for uh, both teams, really. 
Let's take a look right now at the starting lineups for the Oregon Ducks, brought to you by Phillips HD offensively. And it is a makeshift offensive line. They're still getting used to playing with one another. Well, Michael James, we talked about him. He's the freshman. He's a game-breaking type of guy, but he's a freshman. And part of the issue with the offensive line, especially last week against Boise State, was they just didn't have the confidence playing together. And when things didn't start going well and they didn't have a first down until midway through the third quarter, they really started to get down on themselves. It's very important that they keep their confidence up and they have a great opportunity here. Let's take a look at the Purdue defense brought to you by Phillips HD. Along the defensive line, it's a strength of this team. Mike Neal, strongest player on the field. Second there are the uh, linebackers. That, if there is a question mark for Purdue, it's there. Very good at the corners, although perhaps their best corner not available tonight. We'll tell you more about that in a moment. This is Masoli on the keep, and Masoli going to be wrapped up short of the 10-yard line. He'll get him on two. Jason Werner on the tackle for Purdue. Well, you see the ability of Jeremiah Masoli to run the football. He really is an exciting runner. He can run people over. You saw the spin move there. He can accelerate, and he can make you miss. Masoli, once again, check with the sidelines. Now back out, plenty of time. Still 21 seconds on the play clock. And again, to Crenshaw. And Crenshaw bouncing outside, and is caught and wrapped up for a loss. Jason Werner, again, stayed with that play beautifully. Well, if there wasn't a question mark about the linebacking for Purdue, so far they've showed up. And Jason Werner is the captain of this Purdue defense. 13 tackles and a sack against Toledo last week. Very active. Not a very big guy, but looks like he can get sideline to sideline. Originally a safety, so you see that speed starting his second year for the Boilers. James in the backfield now. Three wideouts to the left side. On third down, a long seven. Blitz comes. Masoli throws over the middle, knocked down. So again, a rugged start for the Oregon Ducks. He had the ball at the 12-yard line. Now they're going to have to settle for three. And we've seen Jeremiah Masoli have these problems before when he drops back purely in the pocket. His footwork is not really where they need it to be. Let's watch his legs right here. You see his legs kind of come parallel to the line of scrimmage, and he doesn't step into the throw. It was a drop pass, but Masoli just doesn't look comfortable back there in the pocket. Morgan Flint, 25-yard, 28-yard field goal attempt. Snap place on its way, and... It is good. So Oregon will draw first blood. They lead the Purdue Bowler Lakers three to nothing. We're just getting started. 10-19 remaining. First quarter. Some to kick it off for the Oregon Ducks after a 28-yard field goal for the first points of the ball game. He'll be kicking to the deep man, Aaron Valentine, and Roy Adams. Kind of a line drive kick, hits at the 18-yard line. Valentine runs up, takes it to about the 12, and is cracked as he gets to the 30-yard line. So at the 30-yard line, Play fake, Elliott throws, throws underneath, catch made by Smith. Smith got room across midfield and into Oregon territory at the 48-yard line. Biggest play of the game so far. Time for Phillips HD game break. Let's check in with Darren Horton. Darren. Barry in the horseshoe, number three USC with a special teams blunder. The snap over the head of punter Billy O'Malley after the ensuing free kick. It's 15-10 Buckeyes. And I have to say, that's a bit of a surprise. I honestly thought SC would not only win, but win relatively handily. Bolden this time carries the ball for a first down. So two quick first downs now for the Boilermakers. They're at the 25-yard line. Play fake and a quick toss to Valentine on that quick screen, and Valentine can't escape. Drop is across the 25. Well, you see the diversity of this Purdue offense early. They know how to spread you out. Joe Tiller, the first man to bring the spread offense to the Big Ten. John Boyette makes the play there, and a pretty good play, but Purdue doing all kinds of different things with the running game and moving the quarterback around and running the screen game. Very diversified early in this drive. 
Out of the eye formation this time. Second down and about, call it eight. Golden the tailback, straight back again goes Elliott. Buys time, steps up, throws, caught at the 11-yard line. Aaron Valentine on the catch at the 11-yard line. Inside the 11, they'll mark it at the 9-yard line. First down, Bordermakers, a pickup of 14. And Joey Elliott, the captain of this offense, you see him getting his team right back up to the line of scrimmage. Seems to know exactly what he wants to do. Just started his second game at Purdue as a fifth-year senior. Out of the shotgun, first and goal from the 9. They gave us to Bolden. Bolden stutter steps, gets to the 5-yard line, pickup of 4. Will Tukuafu on the stop for Oregon. Jason Taylor now comes into the ball game for the first time. He was a starter last year. He's a good back, too. Four He's carries 30, last season. Four carries 30 yards early in this game for Boulder. Second out and goal. The ball right at the five-yard line. Elliott under center. They go out of the out formation. And they gave us a Taylor straight ahead into the end zone. Touchdown, Boilermakers. And they did that very well. Walter Thurman the third was the only person that stood between Jason Taylor in the end zone, and Taylor blew right by him. And Taylor's still down in the end zone. Looks like he took a shot to the legs. Seems to be in a lot of pain, but what a physical run by Jason Taylor. And great blocking up front. There you see him. It's just a simple isolation play, and the... The shot did come right on his thigh. Those hurt pretty bad, but he got into the end zone. They feel a lot better when you scored a touchdown, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. I think you might have a little trouble convincing him with that right now, though. Tell you what, this Purdue team coming off of last week. Now, last week's victory against Toledo is looking a whole lot better now. Well, after what Toledo did to Colorado and Dan Hawkins, it looks pretty Pretty impressive, there's no question about it. And both these backs are running the ball physically. Joey Elliott knows what he wants to do with the ball, and the receivers are running around. They are not intimidated by Austin Stadium at all. Carson Riggs will try to add the seventh point and give his team a four-point lead. That was a very impressive drive. Back to point is on its way. It's good. It is a seven to three ball game. Purdue over Oregon. Incidentally, last week Purdue scored seven touchdowns. Five of them took two minutes or less, and this one took two minutes and two seconds, and the Boilermakers lead it by four. Ball with their fullbacks and running back. Wiggs will kick it. Comes forward, strikes this pretty good. It's going to be Thurman at the three-yard line. Comes right back up the middle. Got a little gap. 30-35 into the open. Flag down. And so is Thurman short of midfield. Two flags down. And this one almost certainly will come back. 46-yard return, but I believe it's going to be for naught. You know, one thing I never thought I would see, P, and that is Oregon is last. Count them. Last in nine Pac-10 offensive return. categories after Holding. a week. On the receiving team, number 54, Finyard Finlays from the spot of the foul. First down. Ever think you'd see that? No, and the problem is right now with Oregon, they just can't find a spark. That return by Walt Thurman III right there could have been the spark to get this offense going, and I really think it's a confidence issue with the offensive line and the quarterback situation. You look at Chip Kelly's offense, this is one of the most innovative offensive coaches we've seen in a long time in the Pac-10 Conference and in the country, and they just haven't been able to find their mojo yet. Crenshaw lines up in the backfield. Masoli going to throw on first down. Catch is made and slipping the tackle nicely into the open midfield. 35 to the 30-yard line and shoved out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. Biggest play of the game. Jameer Holland, fastest player on this Oregon team, a transfer from USC, makes the grab and turns it into a huge play. And Jameer Holland has been waiting to blossom with a play like that. And that just might be the spark that the Ducks needed a great track runner. Jameer Holland came from USC and has had some problems learning the playbook and getting out on the football field, but when he knows what he wants to do with the football, you see what he can do. Gain of 40 on that play. They put it at the 35-yard line. They give this time 
is going to solo it, going to keep it, try to get outside the 25, Doyle still on his feet, knocked out of bounds the 21 yard line, that'll be another Oregon first down. You really get the feeling that the Ducks here are a momentum offense, and they're starting to get that momentum headed in the right direction, and none too soon because the people here at Austin Stadium were getting kind of restless. You start out slow with Mike Pilotti as the coach, that's one thing, but a brand new coach in Chip Kelly, that's a whole new thing. So they got it first down at the 21 yard line. Two big plays in a row. Barner is the tailback now. Another freshman. And this is Barner. Barner at the right side. Gets around the corner. Gets it down close to the 15 yard line. Gain of about six. Torrey Williams runs him out. And all of a sudden, maybe for the first time this year, the Oregon offense starting to click. Well, they had one drive against Boise State in the third quarter where they looked like themselves. Right now, you can see that Oregon is faster than Purdue, especially on the perimeter, and that's what they need to keep working. Barner remains in the ballgame. Is solely going to throw, rolls to his left. Now he has to step up, steps out of the tackle, throws, passes caught this time, and dropped out of bounds intended for Jameer Holland. Had it in his hands, could not hang on. A little bit of inconsistency from Jameer Holland makes one great play. You have to make every great play if you're going to convert drives into touchdowns. But there you saw the improvisational ability of Jeremiah Masoli, the great feet, stepping out of things and using his rocket arm. That's where he's best throwing the football. At this point of the season, just not comfortable throwing the ball from the pocket. Oregon just has not been able to convert third downs. They were 1 for 10 last week, 0 for 2 today that's not going to get it done they're looking at the third and four right here Masoli in a drop play he's going to get the first down and more down to the five yard line gain of 10 for jeremiah Masoli. dwight mclean made what might be the saving tackle a great call by chip kelly in that situation getting the purdue linebackers on their heels spreading the purdue de defense way out with the motion and the tailback and letting jeremiah Masoli do it himself So first and goal now for the Ducks at the five-yard line. Give straight ahead to Barner. Got close. Crenshaw got close to the goal line. Going to be about two yards short, I believe. And they get right back up and ready to go all over again. They, both these teams could go quick. Where they can run up the line of scrimmage and take 25 to 30 seconds. High snap, but it's controlled nicely. Touchdown, Crenshaw. And that's what the Duck faithful want to see. Great job on that drive by Chip Kelly, calming down his quarterback, working the perimeter, and then spreading out that Purdue defense so they could start running the run plays, the zone run plays that really do work for the Oregon Ducks. Crenshaw taking the give, the right read by Masoli, walks into the end zone. Seven plays, 75 yards, took two minutes and seven seconds. So both these teams kind of mirror images of each other. Morgan Flint to try to add the 10th point, give the Ducks a three-point lead. And he does. 10 to 7 ball game, 6 minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the game. So a 2 minute, 2 second drive for a touchdown by the Boilermakers and a 2 minutes and 7 second drive for a touchdown for the Oregon Ducks. Here's the final play. You're going to see C.E. Kaiser in this situation getting that zone working. Purdue's very spread out. And there he goes, just a straight route to the smaller linebacker, Jason Werner, the former safety. And you see the big lane open up for Andre Crenshaw, and he just walks into the end zone. So Crenshaw, who really has not been available to the Ducks too much, has just kind of been dinged up a little bit, hasn't practiced as much as the coaches would like. They weren't really sure how far nor how long he would go, but he's been the man so far. And I think that's the smart thing to do. Oregon really likes LaMichael James. Kenyon Barner's going to run the ball in this football game. We've seen, seen him a little bit, but Andre Crenshaw is the senior, and ball security is usually easier for seniors in these kind of situations where the offense is off balance, and they really need to find some rhythm. They found rhythm on that drive. Oregon only had six first downs the whole game last week. They have three first downs just on that last drive. So things started to turn a little bit for the Ducks. They've got to find a way to stop the Boilermakers, which they have not done. 
This is going to be Adams at the two-yard line. Gets the 10, the 50 cracked, and down he goes just across the 15-yard line. Excellent play on special teams. I believe it was Willie Gaspar who made that play. Well, let's take a look at our days in numbers and uh, the most rushing yards in a game in Purdue history. Ralph Bolden last week amongst some heavyweights. Well, Mike Allstott, when he played fullback and tailback, whoever got the ball in the situation is where Mike Allstott used to play. He was a joy to watch in his years at Purdue. So they'll start out of the gun. Bolden remains the running back. Elliott, the quarterback. Give the Bolden. And nothing to do. Not a lost a yard. Converged upon by about three Oregon Ducks. Well, the Oregon defense has got to be given a big sigh of relief right now after watching that drive from the Oregon offense. That's exactly what they want to see. Nice tackle by Brandon Bear in that situation, just wrapping up Ralph Bolden. Second down and 11. They go into the eye formation this time. Bolden, the tailback. And the give again is to Bolden, and Bolden is going to be wrapped up. And another big time play coming off the edge that time by Will Tukuafu. Very quick off the edge. Will Tukuafu is really the straw that stirs the drink for this Oregon defense. He's, he's the daddy of all these guys. He's on all the watch lists. He's already graduated in poli sci. Just a fantastic young man and a great play there coming down the line of scrimmage. Taylor back at the running back spot. Third down and 10. Nickel defense for Oregon. Elliott throws, and it's caught as the defender fell down. Ballantyne makes the catch. First down, Boilermakers, just short of the 40-yard line. Well, Oregon wants a push-off in that situation. Talmadge Jackson the third did end up on the ground, but that ball stuck right onto Valentine. Great throw by Joey Elliott. He's making all the throws. Looks very poised. Very confident. They're giving Oregon a little bit of a taste of their own medicine with the hurry-up offense. Pass interference on the offense. Push Number off on the offense. Penalty is half the distance from the previous spot. Third down. So it's going to come back, and it's going to make a real problem. Watch it again. Well, there he is, Valentine. This is going to be a very simple <laughs> comeback route, and I would say that that is a push-off. Very physical play. That's great in blitz pickup, but you can't do that down the field. So now, third down and 19. Smith going to the far side. Out of the gun with Bolden, the setback. And he gave us to Bolden. Bolden gets a little room and is collared as he gets the 20 yard line. Pretty good run for Bolden, though. Picked up about nine, not nearly enough. Willie Glassbar makes the tackle. Well, Ralph Bolden loves to four wheel back home in Georgia. And every once in a while, when he gets in the open field, he looks kind of like he's on a four-wheel. I mean, this is a guy that could break it at any moment, and I have a feeling he's going to break one in this football game. That kid's very electric. Very quick. Thurman waits to receive this punch. Almost blocked. And a flag is down. Thurman makes the catch and is knocked down as it crosses midfield. But we'll see about the flag. A couple of penalties on special teams for the Ducks have hurt them so far, assuming this one is on the Ducks. Flag was thrown before the ball was even caught by Thurman. Conversation going on amongst the officials. Referee in this game, veteran Jack Foliart. Holding number 17 of the return team. The penalty is 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Call a penalty on Willie Glassbar, Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, and Michael Eaves here at a sold out Autzen Stadium. What a beautiful night it is in Eugene. Temperatures at kickoff 85 degrees. I've been coming up here for 30 years. I've never seen it 85 degrees. It's a little bit balmy. The people around here walking around in shorts. Stepping in the kiddie pools, feeling great about themselves in this beautiful weather. 10 to 7 ball game. Oregon ahead of 
the Purdue Boilermakers had a very nice drive the last time. Well, Michael James lines up in the backfield with Masoli. Blitz comes on first down, and no place to go for James. That was a run blitz and very well executed. So a loss of two on first down makes it second down and 12. And again, Ducks come right up to the line of scrimmage. Both these teams operate this way. They will sometimes run hurry up, sometimes wait. Very tough to defend. And now we get whistles. So they made us wait. Now we're going to wait a little longer. Well, you see the lack of rhythm still on this Oregon offense, just still struggling to find their identity. Dead ball, false start on the offensive line. Five yard penalty, second down. Let's take a look at our fearless predictions presented by Phillips HD. And we're going to be talking about Jeff Mayo. He is number 23, wide receiver for the Oregon Ducks. He's a possession guy, but a guy, whenever you really need a big play, seems to be there. Well, he's sneaky fast and a long strider, and he's had a slow start at this game. But Jeff Mayo is going to break this game open eventually. You'll see him. Here's a Michael James on the reverse. Not much. Well played defensively by the Boilermakers. Not being fooled was Nick Mondek, who makes the stop on James. Again, of about three. And there is Jeff Mail. Mail has been very steady. You can see at his career game last year back in West Lafayette. Oregon, of course, won that game in overtime. Crenshaw back in at the running back spot now on third down and 14. Masoli straight back in trouble. Down he goes back at the 23 yard line. First sack of the ball game, it was Gerald Gooden blowing in from the defensive end position. And that's partially because of the double teams that are drawn by Mike Neal and Kawan Short inside. Gerald Gooden, one on one. Went right around him. Darian Weems victimized by Gooden, who gets right to Masoli. And I don't care how uncomfortable Masoli is in the pocket, that's going to make you very uncomfortable when something like that happens. Punt, a low kick headed for Valentine. Comes up, takes it at the 36. Got a little room, and he runs out of room quickly. He's going to be wrapped up and dropped back at about the 35 yard line. So a loss of two on the return, a punt of 42 yards. Well, we talked about the fact that these two teams hooked up just a year ago in West Lafayette. Sellout crowd there, over 62,000. Corey Sheets. One of the heroes of the day for the Purdue Boilermakers. Good running back, made it in the NFL, playing on a practice squad for the San Francisco 49ers. LeGarrette Blunt, though, he came up even bigger. Blunt, 12 carries, 132 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and this three-yard run in the second overtime gave Oregon the win. Oregon wins it at West Lafayette in overtime, 32-26. Elliott, quarterback, Bolden, running back, and now we've got a timeout taken by the Purdue Boilermakers with a minute and 55 seconds remaining here in the first period. 10 to 7 ball game. It's been a very interesting game so far, Pete. It really has. Both teams offensively doing the things that they normally do coming up to the line of scrimmage. The one thing I'm shocked about with the Purdue offense is the command of Joey Elliott starting just his second game and the I formation that they've been pretty successful with running the ball with Ralph Bolden. And you look at the series history with both games at Purdue. Pretty interesting, yep, too, the two split. overtimes last year. And a little revenge on the mind of the Boilers, I believe, coming in here to Autzen Stadium. They didn't like hearing that this was too long of a trip for them and the time change was going to be tough for them. They, they kind of took umbrage to those states. No, they really did. I love what Danny Hope told us. Look, these kids are up 10 to 1 o'clock is when they're really <laughs> up and cooking back in West Lafayette, so why shouldn't they be out here playing a football game at 10 to 1 o'clock Eastern time? And we've seen the two running backs for Purdue really get a crack at Ralph Bolden and Jason Taylor. And Danny Hope was telling us that that competition at the running back position has really infected the whole team and made everybody better. Come up with a double slot on first down. Ball at the 36-yard line. Again, they go out of the gun. Now they have to throw. Quick pass caught by Valentine. A pickup of about four to the 40-yard line. Elliott had a little something-something on that ball. Yeah, he's throwing the ball very well, and Aaron Valentine slipped and got up and made that catch. Well, the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire ownership is 295 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Second down and six. 
for the Boilermakers. Again, out of the gun. Elliott rolls right. Going to put it up. He's got a little room to run if he wants to. And he does. And it closes down quickly. He'll get about two. Before being stopped in the center of the Oregon defense. I think Elliott got a little bit romanced by the spacing on that play. The decision to run was not a bad decision. However, he made the decision a little too quickly. And Oregon closed. You see the speed of the Oregon defense. They're not bad. Well, they quick to the ball. No question about it. Big play here now. Third down and five. As clock, the clock ticks down here in the first quarter. And there's that high formation again. They ran that 21 times against Toledo last week. Elliott rolls out. Look out. Throws over the middle. Caught this time by Smith, and that's going to be a first down. Well executed play. And Keith Smith is a very impressive receiver, a rangy young man. He's a major in forensics and the law in America. Keith Smith wants to be one of those CSI guys. Yeah. Told us his big thrill this summer was observing an autopsy. Wow. Thank you, thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> yeah, last year, 49 receptions and a couple touchdowns. Eight receptions against Toledo for 117 yards and a touchdown. A lot of production coming from number eight for the boy. Two catches for 34 yards today. Again, Elliott going to put it up. Again, he's in trouble. Again, he throws, and the ball's caught, but I think out of bounds. Ball was caught by Kyle Adams. But it's going to be an incomplete pass. Caught it out of bounds. Well, we saw an impressive drive by the Oregon Ducks, but right now, the Boilers' offense seems to be the more crisp offense, and I believe that's because of the captain, Joey Elliott, the quarterback out of Evansville, Indiana. He wants to be a coach, and he grows up. Looks like he's coaching that offense right now out on, out on the field. He is very much in command right now. Well, he's the son of a coach. Both his mom and his dad are coaches. His mom's a tennis coach. His dad's a football coach, and he wants to be a coach. That's a lot of instruction. <laughs> Second down and ten. Short drop this time, and the pass caught by Smith. Steps out of a tackle at the 40, 35, and another first down for Purdue at the 33-yard line of the Ducks. And that's going to be the last play of the first quarter. Purdue driving their trail by three. But a look at the scoreboard at the end of the first 15 minutes of play of what has been a very interesting game. The Oregon Ducks 10 and the Purdue Boilermakers on a West Lafayette, Indiana 7. 10 to 7 ball game. Second quarter of play coming up when we come back to Austin Stadium here in Eugene, Oregon after this. Here's our eHarmony numbers. The stats brought to you by eHarmony.com. You can see Purdue all over Oregon in the offensive department and moving the ball once again. They have it at the 33-yard line. First down as we start this second period. Trips right formation this time for Purdue. They go out of the gun again. Blitz comes and a, a little bubble screen this time. And on the move is Carlos. Carlos going to get it down inside the 20 and another first down. Right call at the right time. The turnover, really the difference in the game, the pick by Casey Matthews. But other than that, and the nice drive by Oregon, tell you what, Purdue really seems to know what they want to do. That time, Carlos just on the inside screen, well blocked, perfect throw, getting Carlos going. And Lewis ends up making the tackle, but not before. Purdue gets another first down. 7 of 11 for 80 yards now for Joey Elliott, who's doing a brilliant job. Give it straight ahead this time and breaking into the open. He said he was going to do this and into the end zone for a touchdown goes Bolden. Yeah. And that was easy. Hey, you hear the silence here in Autzen Stadium. Just the sliver of Purdue fans that made the long trip from West Lafayette. Pretty geeked up about that run by Ralph Bolden. They saw a lot of that last week. But Danny Hope knew Ralph Bolden was going to do this. He had a great spring and they knew he was going to be pretty special. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week last week, along with Penn State's Daryl Clark. This kid's pretty confident running the football. He's going to be a big star in the Big Ten this year. Yeah, he's been nicked up a little bit. This is really the first season that he's really played healthy. Even going back to his high school senior year, he had a knee injury. Carson Wiggs drives the extra point through. It's a 14-10 to 10 lead now for the Purdue Boilermakers, who are really in sync. Their offense, the most impressive thing about it is that they're acting like they expected this to happen. Look at the center right here. 
just take command of this situation and get down the field, sealing off Spencer Pacinger right there and leaving things opened up for Ralph Bolden. Downfield blocking on Walt Thurman the third, getting in the way. And that was just enough to get Ralph Bolden into the end zone. Did a lot on his own, too. A great, great run, well blocked. And this football team, and as we said, you know, last week you look at the score, they beat Toledo, you thought, well, geez, they gave up 38 points to Toledo, and it's a game they really should have won, probably should have won easily. And then what happens? Toledo just blows out Colorado last night. That win's looking pretty good, and they're playing pretty darn good here. Well, teams right now that are mid-major teams like Toledo and Houston just look like teams that can put up points all day on anybody and that's the situation that we're looking at early in this college football season and Purdue seemed to do a pretty good job holding Toledo off now so the kick this time is headed for Barner at the goal line Barner could cook Gets back to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. Little gap, and then he is just crushed as he gets to the 24 yard line. On the stop that time for the Boilermakers on special team, Josh Johnson. This is a pivotal drive for this Oregon offense and for the young career of Chip Kelly here in Oregon. They have got to find that momentum, that confidence, and got him the touchdown in the first quarter, and it starts with the quarterback. Jeremiah Masoli. He's got to make the correct reads. He's got to be physical when he's going to be physical. And he's got to throw the ball judiciously down the field. Masoli just one of five. That was the 40 yard pass to Holland. Masoli going to throw again. A little slam. That's caught for pickup of about seven. Right now, let's take another look at a fearless prediction presented by Phillips HD. And well, they call Mike Neal beastly, and they do so with good reason. Well, he's an absolute beast. That's why. 510-pound <laughs> bench press, and he thinks he could do more, but he just decided to stop there. An automatic double team and a captain. Here's Masoli rolling to his left, steps up, throws downfield, has a man, balls caught by Holland, and a first down for the Oregon Ducks across the 45. Pick up a 15 on the play. Incidentally, Purdue's last drive only took 2 minutes and 25 seconds. So all the drives in this game, 225 or less. And that's exactly how these teams want it. Makes it tough on the defense. Now Masoli will do one of those check with me. Look at the sideline. CWM. Give this time straight ahead. Crenshaw was the ball carrier. Here you're going to see Neal. We talked about him drawing a double team, but just look at the lumberjack strength holding off pretty much every offensive lineman that the Ducks have to be near the tackle. Barnum in the ball game. Now there's a pitch to Barnum. They try to get him outside, and it's run down beautifully by the Purdue defense on the stop Josh McKinley coming over from a safety spot just not being fooled and not letting Barner get outside him. and one of these backs for Oregon they want to use all three Andre Crenshaw and Michael James and Barner but one of them's gonna to have to step up and say I'm gonna be the guy to carry the load we're watching a live competition that matters straight back to Soli late blitz comes bubble screen incomplete and it's going to be fourth down. The Ducks are going to have to give it up. Jeff Mayo was the intended receiver. Didn't really have a chance. It's almost like every time the Ducks have a negative play offensively, it just seems to build and feed, and they end up punting the football. That's the second drop we've seen by Jeff Mayo today. Very uncharacteristic of the young man. They just don't look in sync to me, Pete. No. Straight up. Very short kick. And this is going to be spotted somewhere around the 35 or 36 yard line. So great field position for Purdue. They'll have it when we come back. Someday he'll call. and the Western Athletic Conference, but also, guys, the service academies of Army and Navy will also be in that deal from 2013. Straight back to pass Elliott on first down. Going to air it out. Ball might have been hit as he threw. A little tangling going on between 
an Oregon player and an offensive lineman from Purdue. It looked like it might have been Ken Plu. That sideline report, incidentally, sponsored by FreeCreditReport.com. Ken Plu, just one of those giant trees that Purdue has on the offensive line. Six foot five, six seven, six four, six five, and six foot eight. They're big. Across the way for Purdue. Good thing Joey Elliott's six foot two, or he wouldn't be able to see over those guys. Oh, he needs a point guard. Jeez. Second down and ten. Bold, or rather, Taylor this time. And nothing doing for Taylor in the middle of the line. So it'll be third down and ten now. Purdue scored two of the last three times it's had the ball, and really it took that offensive pass interference penalty to stop him on the third time. Now looking at a third and long. Good to see Jason Taylor recovering. He was really shaken up in the end zone after the touchdown he scored on the isolation play. He looked very physical and very fast, just like his counterpart, Ralph Bolden. Coming to slot right, crowd getting involved now. Elliott rolling out, look out from behind, throws and throws it away. I think Elliott probably felt footsteps and with good reason. Tukuafu was cut hard. And that was a good job by Joey Elliott just to get rid of the football with Tukuafu chasing him down. If he held that ball for a couple more seconds, he was going down and he could have fumbled that football. But I'm pretty impressed with the feet of Joey Elliott. He's pretty nifty out there. So Chris Summers will punt it away. Thurman stands at the 21. And a line drive kick takes a big hop. Thurman runs up, gets it on a big hop. Comes right back, skips over the man. Flag is down again. And Thurman down at the 43-yard line. If, if this is against Oregon, and I presume that it is, it'll be their third penalty on special teams. And that's just going to drive Chip Kelly crazy. He's been talking to his team about habits, discipline, and structure. On the return team, number 88, Denver penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Again, habits, discipline, and structure is what Chip Kelly has been preaching all week, and that hasn't been happening right now, especially on the special team for Oregon. 14 to 10, Boilermakers. of Jeremiah Masoli. So Rob Baird will come on to do the punting and Valentine stands at the 45 yard line. Oregon is 2 of 16 on third down plays this year. Good punt. He's going to drive Valentine all the way back to his own 35 yard line. Slips the first man. Now he'll try to get to the outside. Can't do it. Drop the 40 yard line. So a very good punt. Well, of course, you talked about the fact that the Oregon Ducks went back to Boise and just laid an egg, and we had a chance to talk to Chip Kelly about all of that. You know, if you continue to dwell on the past and, and continue to think about mistakes that we made last Thursday night in Boise, you know, then, then you're not doing yourself justice. You know, we need to move on as a team. We need to correct the mistakes that we made last week and then get ready to play a really good Purdue team. But if we continue to think about what happened in the past, you know, the, the, there's a statement, I think, by the one of the philosophers, Santiana, that says, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. So, you know, we're going to learn from our mistakes last week, and then we're going to move on. Well, they try not to repeat it, but alas. Boilermakers at the 40-yard line. Quick cross and grab this time. Pass caught by Cortez Smith. And that's going to be a first step. Well, when we got together with Chip Kelly yesterday, he talked about Purdue being a little bit of an unknown, that he didn't know what they were going to do. He thought they shut it down in the first half against Toledo and, and kind of coasted through the rest of the game and, and didn't show a whole bunch on Purdue, but uh, on film. But this, this Purdue team looked very confident and very poised, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Cortez Smith was three yards short of the first down, so it's second down and three. And he gave us the bold, and bold is wrapped up right now. Still managed to fall forward for about a yard. Will Tukwafu in a bit of a pretty nice game defensively for the Oregon Ducks when he was the stop. So it'll be third down and about two, long two. And this is a big play for Coach Aliotti's Oregon defense. The defense played pretty well last week in 91 snaps. We were talking about it against Boise State in 2008. 
Oregon's defense played more snaps than anybody else in the country, and they're playing a lot tonight. They go with an empty backfield here, so five receivers, three to the right side, two to the left side, third down, and two. The Ducks show blitz. And they come with the blitz off the edge, and the pass is incomplete. Good job that time by Oregon defensively forced Elliott to throw it earlier than he would have liked to. It was Bryson Littlejohn coming off the edge and right in the face of Elliott. Bryson Littlejohn, you're going to see him coming right up here, flying in on Elliott and just putting a big hit on him. Bryson Littlejohn showed up in the spring from Sierra Junior College. He's originally out of Elk Grove, California, and they liked the way he looked right away. A very stout 6'1", 230-pound junior. So Thurman to receive this punt. They try to kick away from him. He runs over handles at about the 13-yard line, but he's surrounded and steps out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. 40-yard punt, 7-yard return. The Ducks will have it back when we come back to Hudson Stadium after this. Sometimes it feels like you'll never find... On the offense, number 77. It's a five-yard penalty, first down. Right now, let's take our time for a game summary brought to you by DirecTV. Golden have produced 64 rushing yards coming off a 234-yard game last week. Oregon has rushed for only 43 yards, and one of them was a big run by Masoli. So really, they are pretty much dead in the water despite 138 yards. They had a couple of big plays. This time, the game is... Masoli on the keeper. Masoli's going to turn it into a huge game across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Pick up a 34. Josh McKinley ends up making the tackle, but you saw the acceleration of Jeremiah Masoli. And here you go. C.E. Kaiser once again doing a great job walling off the smaller Warner, who's had a good game, and Masoli just running through that giant yawning hole. A great job, but they got to get the tailbacks going. Haven't had him going at all and still don't as Crenshaw gets the carry here, rather Barner gets the carry here and picks up about a yard. Well, we talked to Danny Hope about the tailback competition at Purdue. Ralph Bolden and Jason Taylor infecting the rest of the team and really getting guys going. We need to see for Oregon the tailback competition materialize on the field right now between James and Barner and Crenshaw in the absence of, of LeGarrette Blunt. They got to get going. And this time the give is to Barner, and Barner's going to get ahead for about five. Still going to be a couple yards short of the first out, so it's going to be third and two and a big play right here, coming down toward the five-minute mark remaining in the first half. It seems like the key right now for Oregon, Barry, is just to continue to have positive plays, because whenever they have a negative play offensively, it usually turns into a punt. And this time the ball snap pops up in the air. Masoli spins out a run tackle and it's going to be dragged down back to the 50-yard line. And it's going to be fourth down and they just can't seem to get it right. And again, a fine play by the defensive captain, the Sam linebacker, Jason Werner. He might be getting walled off every once in a while by the giant C.E. Kaiser. But when he does get in that backfield and he gets his hands on a runner, he does a great job bringing him down. Just a fine tackler. He's had a big game. Save a couple of moments. And once again, the Ducks are going to have to give it back to the Boilermakers. Bear turns this punt over, and a fair catch called for and made at the nine-yard line by Valentine. A 41-yard punt and no return. Well, a little bit early in the year, I think, to start talking about the Heisman Trophy, but we're going to do it anyhow and uh, talk about who might, might be the front runners. And things, of course, change at this juncture by the week. Tim Tebow did nothing to hurt his chances today at five touchdown passes. And one of the great leaders in all of college football, maybe the best we'll ever see in college football, Colt McCoy. Fantastic again today. Max Hall of BYU, you got to show him some love for what he did. Job is best, and Cal just continues to impress, averaging over 10 yards a carry right now on the year. And look out for Joe McKnight. He's getting pretty sneaky there at USC with all those wacky moves. But quite honestly, I, I'm not sure he belongs in that conversation quite yet. He might earn his way into that discussion. But some pretty heavy hitters ahead of him. We're just keeping an eye there. All right. Elliott steps up, throws it, it's going to be a touchdown for the Ducks. Picked off by Walter Thurman. I'm not sure Elliott ever saw him. And a 17-yard touchdown for the Oregon Ducks gives them the lead. Well, Elliott.
Hogan floated that ball out there. Almost baited, it seemed, by Walter Thurman III. And a guy like Walter Thurman III, just to watch him work in the man-to-man -man situation is a pleasure. One of the best, if not the best, corner in the Pac-10. Certainly one of the best in the country. Just jumps right in front of Keith Smith. And that looked easy. And here's that set that... Uh under Mike Pilate, they used to use all the time. I never, I never saw him run out of it. And now they shift and they'll just kick it. This to make it a 17 to 14 ball game. And it is Oregon 17, Purdue 14. Four minutes and four seconds remaining in the first half. Elliott, at that time, it's just simply a ball he'd love to have back. Well, that's two mistakes by Joey Elliott in the first half, but you see the beautiful protection and ball security is just too important. A nice pocket. He almost threw it out of a rocking chair, but you see that ball floats a little bit, and it really wasn't on Keith Smith to come back to that football. Just too many instincts by Walter Thurman III. Too much experience in the Pac-10 and too much electricity in that body. Really a pleasure to watch is Walt Thurman. All right, let's go to the sidelines of Michael Eaves. Mike, what do you got? Yeah, Barry, you know, Walter Thurman almost went to the NFL last season along with the fellow cornerback, Jarius Bird, who did leave. He had five interceptions last year. He said he wanted to come back, get his degree. He's going to do that this fall, but also he wanted to improve his draft status. He said he was hampered a little bit by injuries last year, really played through some pain. But Nick Aladoni, the defensive coordinator for Oregon, says this is the kid you hope everyone you coach is like Walter because you don't have to tell him anything twice. He's a super kid both on and off the field, and he's showing it here tonight. Yeah, and he has been a little chance to visit with him last season a couple of times. Wonderful kid. He's a hard worker and a great player, and he's got long arms, just a perfect-looking cornerback, and he'll play at the next level. High end of a rim kick. This is headed for Adams at the six-yard line. Make a Valentine. And Valentine will get it back across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. And Valentine comes out of there with a little bit of a hitch in his giddy up. So Purdue will have it back following the interception return for a touchdown by Thurman. Now the Boilermakers makers trail by three, just under four minutes remaining in the first half. There's the numbers on Joey Elliott, but those numbers on the right, the two picks, the difference in the game right now. And just judging Joey Elliott's body language, I don't think he's phased by those interceptions. This seems like a very mentally tough young man at quarterback. Yeah, had three interceptions against Toledo last week, but he also had three touchdown passes. There's a handoff to Bolden, and Bolden gets into the secondary and picks up about six on first down. Well, the first and ten line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% off brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Going to be second down and four. For Purdue, the ball just across the 30-yard line. Plenty of time. 3.30 remaining in the half. Taking a little more time here. Here comes a blitz. Elliott steps up, throws, clear on over the middle. Ball is caught this time for a first down by the tight end, Adams. Kyle Adams, one of the great stories on this Purdue team. Hurt in the first game, the first play of the first game last year. Interception versus Toledo, but a great job there catching the ball and getting upfield immediately. Six foot four, 250 pounds. That's pretty difficult to get that body going in the right direction. But Elliott led it pretty well. There. Good student, all academic, Big Ten. First down. And again, this time straight ahead, Bolden will get about three, maybe four yards. Gain of three, it'll be second and seven. Clock ticks down now to 35 remaining first half. Bolden now, 12 carries, 73 yards. And Purdue has really shifted gears offensively. They're still in the I formation, but they're starting to huddle up a lot more now. Elliott straight back with time, throws up the middle, catch made by Adams, got room midfield, and down at about the 48-yard line. A little bit of a different look, too, that they're giving the Oregon Ducks. Walter Thurman makes the tackle, gain of 11. You were talking about the grade point average of Kyle Adams. He's also a guy who's a real philanthrope. 
Takes other student athletes at Purdue down to Haiti to help out the underprivileged. Not a lot of college football players doing that in the offseason. No, I say. Took the golf team down there. Wow. This time Elliott rolls out, buys time. Now they'll throw, and it's caught for a first down by Valentine at the 34-yard line. Clock will stop. 153 remaining. Purdue still has two timeouts remaining. Nice what? poise and patience here, Barry. Look at the footwork of Joey Elliott on that sideline. It's okay to throw the ball late as long as it's on the sidelines and not over the middle. You throw the ball late like that over the middle, sometimes, more often than not, you get picked. Nice grab by Valentine. Taylor in the ball game now, along with Bolden. And this is going to be Taylor. I remember this is going to be the fullback crank, and he'll get it down to about the 19-yard line. First time they've given it to the fullback. They don't use a fullback a whole lot. But they gave it that time to Jared Crank and watch the guys up front and watch the hole. Well, Jared Crank is just going to slide through here on the hole and a really nice push. The Purdue offensive line is getting that is doing the job and the fullbacks love that. Surviving awesome. on a touch or two a game. That was about three pancakes on that play. Taylor remains the setback. This is Taylor right up the gut. Gets about three. Tell you what, right now, the Purdue offensive line is moving the Ducks off the ball. They're getting a good push, and despite the couple mistakes, the interceptions by Joey Elliott, the offense still seems to have their game plan together. They seem to know exactly what they want to do, and they've done a great job taking the air out of the stadium after the exciting interception return by Walt Thurman III. They've really gotten it together on this drive. Coming down to one minute remaining in the half now. Ball at the 18-yard line. I mean, straight back. Blitz comes. Throw to the end zone a little too far. Intended that time for Keith Smith. <laughs> Willie Glassbar defending, and the blitz, I think, forced Elliott to throw that ball a little early. Good job by the Oregon defense hurrying Joey Elliott up. But I got to say, despite those picks, I'm impressed with the body language of Joey Elliott. I mean, here's a guy who's really in command of this offense. And just a very positive energy coming from him toward his teammates, getting everybody in the right position, even after an incomplete pass. He's clapping his hands and getting everybody going. Taylor remains the setback. Good play here, third down and seven. Blitz comes, all off blitz. Elliott throws, slam, caught at the five-yard line by Valentine. First down and goal. <laughs> Talmadge Jackson made the stop. They were coming with an all-out blitz. And Elliott hung in there just perfectly and delivered the ball on the money. Where only Valentine could get it. And Valentine is really starting to show up in the first half of this football game, making a lot of catches. Very solid. Six receptions already in the first half. Solid receiving game by Aaron Valentine. Bolden back in the ball game at tailback. This is Bolden straight ahead. He's cracked as he gets to the three-yard line. Now they got to call a timeout. 25 seconds remaining, and they do. So Purdue will call its second timeout in the first half. We'll have one remaining, and it'll be second down and goal at the three-yard line. Casey Matthews was the man who stood bold enough after a gain of about two. Well, right now, let's take a look at uh, our student athletes from both squads. Uh, first of all, from the Oregon Ducks, Riley Showalter. He's got a 3.1 average in business administration. He was on our mention Pac-10 all academic last year. He is the Oregon Duck who stars in the classroom. And the other side of the coin for the Purdue Boilermakers, Joe Holland. How about four point average? That's not bad. Well, when you look at guys doing it like that in the classroom playing college football, you really have to be impressed because what they're doing more than anything is really managing their time well. There you got to look at Holland, the redhead, just managing their time well. Imagine being so tired and beat up after a long football game and long plane rides and being with all your buddies. You want to go home and just crash out. But these guys, they hit the books hard and they know why they're in college. Well, I'll tell you what, Purdue kind of picking up and left off last week and had 535 yards of offense against the leader. So far today, 243, but the most important ones for them are these final three right here. It's second down and goal. Just inside the four-yard line. Elliott over the middle floats it up. There's a lot of holding going on there, but no flag. 
Then the pass intended for Kyle Adams. If anybody was going to get it, Elliott really kind of threw that one away. It really seems like this wasn't a very catchable ball. I believe it was for Kyle Adams. You see him coming right to us. And that ball was not going to be caught by anybody, Barry. Absolutely not. I'm really impressed with Purdue's multiple personnel groups in this football game. Bringing in two tight ends, one tight end. Messing around with a fullback a little bit. Three wide receivers. They're really showing a lot of looks. Look at them. They're going to go empty this time. On third down and goal. Good play. Elliott, quick toss this time. Nothing doing. Jeff Lindsay makes the catch and is driven backward by the Oregon Ducks and the whole left side of the Ducks defense. Will Tukuafu was the first man to him. Tukuafu coming up big today. A great read by Tukuafu to get out there in a hurry on the screen. There's Big Will right there. Tell you what, the Oregon defense is faster, especially on the perimeter, than this Purdue team. Both sides of the ball, the Oregon team is faster than Purdue, but Purdue is playing crisper for the most part in this football game. At that time, the speed of Oregon just glaring as they got out there to handle that screen. So with four seconds remaining in the half, the Boilermakers will try a field goal to try to tie things. And of course, here at Autzen Stadium, Purdue has managed to quiet the crowd, but according to Chip Kelly, this is a tough, tough place. Gives you goosebumps every time you see it, and it never gets old. And our fans are probably the most educated fans in college football. They know when to cheer. You know, in every game, people are going to be calling timeouts in the first half. They're going to get delayed games. You know, the young quarterbacks get rattled in this place. It's a, it's a no audible zone because it's so loud. Here's the field goal try, 23 yarder for Wiggs. It is on its way and it is driven through. And we're going to end the first half tied at 17, a game worthy, I think, of being tied at 17, a game with a lot of ebb and flow. And uh, got to give it up for the Purdue Boilermakers. They made the trip all the way out here from West Lafayette. There was a big question mark about them as much as there was a big question mark about the Oregon Ducks. And I think both teams stepped up. And I think your point is well taken that Purdue is a little bit sharper. Right now, let's go to Michael Eves go. with Danny Hope. Michael. Hi, right, Barry. Uh, Danny, you said that taking the crowd out of the game would be vital for your team, and you were able to do that with your offense by moving the ball up and down the field. Maybe some, but I can still hear him. It's awful loud down here, but what a, what a great first half of football. Uh, I think we came out and was a little bit disjointed early and settled out, down some. Uh, hats off to our football team. Uh, they have kept fighting the whole way. Excited about the second half coming up. How about your defense? They've got 17 points, but only really gave up one drive for a touchdown. Well, they've done a great job. It's been a physical game across the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Very pleased with the play of our defense so far. We've had some guys banged up, had to play some substitutes early in the game, and I thought our guys have really rose to the occasion. Appreciate the time we've seen in the second half. Thank you. Danny Hope said he didn't come 2,000 miles for his team to lay down. They came here to win. And at the half, it's tied at 17 all. Geico Halftime Report coming up next. In between the Oregon Ducks and the Purdue Boilermakers. I'm Barry Tompkins. That guy right there is Petros Papadakis. And uh, Petros, you look at this game, and for Oregon, from their viewpoint, it's deja vu all over again. Their defense is being asked to do a whole lot. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much in this situation. The plays on the defense and, of course, the time of possession last week against Boise State and again this week is just humongously lopsided. And offensively for Oregon, they just seem very haphazard right now really struggling to find an identity and find a rhythm. We'll see if they can get it in the second half. And Purdue, on the other hand, does have a pretty good rhythm, really on both sides of the ball. Right now, let's go down to the sideline. Michael Eves, he had an opportunity to talk with Coach Chip Kelly. Mike? Yeah, Barry, and his message to his team at halftime was pretty simple. He said, we've simply got to finish. We've got to finish the second half. We've got 30 minutes to find out what we're made of. And that's going to start right now as they will have the ball to start the third quarter. Now, earlier in the night, we told you about the suspension of LeGarrette Blunt offering an opportunity for these young running backs for the Oregon Ducks to step up. There you see the numbers. As Petro said earlier, they need to get into the competition where that's coming out on the field. They haven't done that yet. All right, here's Thurman. He gets a little gap on the kickoff from 35 to 40 to 45 across the 45-yard line to the 47. And that's exactly what the Ducks would have wanted. 37-yard return. Let's take our Geico eyes on the quarterback, Jeremiah Masoli. Leads Oregon in rushing right now, but four for 10 passing for 95 yards. A little bit misleading because 72 of those yards came on two balls. Well, it's become a very difficult situation right now for Jeremiah Masoli just trying to find the rhythm, trying to find the comfort zone with his offense. 
Here's Masoli going to throw, throws for Mayo, makes the catch at about the 47-yard line of Purdue. David Pender defending. It's going to be a gain of about six. Well, that's a good sign for Masoli having Jeff Mayo involved. He needs to have some big plays, just like Walter Thurman III has had big plays if Oregon is going to win this football game down the stretch. So it'll be second down and four. Crenshaw in at the running back spot now. They've played all three. And here's Masoli on the keeper. Masoli to the short side flag down. And Masoli gets out of bounds at the 39-yard line. He'll have a first down, but let's see about the flag. Holding on the offense, number 79. Yep. Once penalty, again. Spot of the foul, second down. Once again, the Ducks right self-destructing here. Eight penalties now for 61 yards for the Oregon Ducks. There's the last five possessions, as you see. So they are just not getting it done on the offensive end, very much out of rhythm. And this is an offense that really runs when it runs effectively, it runs rhythmically. They haven't been able to recover in this football game from negative plays. And football is about overcoming adversity on a macro and micro level for this Oregon team. And a fumble, the ball loose, and let's see a battle for it. Purdue says they have it. No signal from the officials yet. It was a bad exchange between Masoli and Crenshaw, and still no signal. And Purdue has it. So a huge break for the Purdue Boilermakers. The tackle was made by Kawan Short, who knocked the ball loose, and big Mike Neal on the bottom of the pile. You're not going to get it away from him. Those two interior guys for Purdue just raising absolute bedlam in the Oregon backfield on that play. You already have the tenuous nature of the option where the quarterback could give or keep to the running back. At that time, Masoli not really clear with it, his decision to keep it or pull it out. Ball ends up on the ground. So Elliott brings his team to the line of scrimmage at the 42-yard line of the Oregon Ducks. Each team now with two turnovers. Just underway, second half. Bolden, the running back. This is Bolden. And he bounces off one man, but he's not going to get much. About two, just short of the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Bolden, remember coming off a huge game last week against Toledo. He had 238 yards rushing. Had about 75 in the first half of this game. Just an explosive player and an early star in the 2009 season for the Purdue Boilermakers. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week, along with Penn State's Daryl Clark. Second down and eight. This is a double wing formation. Duck show blitz, then back out of it. Elliott throws underneath, catches made by Adams, and that's going to be close to a first down, but about a yard short, I believe. Elliott's pass complete to Kyle Adams. Bryson Littlejohn defending. I'll tell you what, I can't be more impressed right now, despite the two interceptions, one for a touchdown, a pick six, with this Purdue offense. Offensive coordinator David Nord just throwing all kinds of different personnel grouping, different in players coming in and out, different guys touching the football. And here's a give and popping it loose and enough for a first down on the second effort was Bolden. Great job on second effort. And they are not phased at all by this vaunted stadium, Otson which is the scourge of probably every Pac-10 team that has to come up here and play Walter Thurman III making the tackle on Ralph Bolden, but not before. He got very close to the stick, and yeah, he got it. So a first down at the 32-yard line. There's a pitch to Bolden. Bolden trying to get outside, not going to happen. He is wrapped up and thrown back around the 40-yard line. A big loss of about eight. Blake Ferris, first man to him, called a loss of six. So good job that time defensively by the Ducks. There you see the pitch. 
And that's Kenny Rowe just doing a good job breaking down and making the tackle on a very jittery running back. Ralph Bolden has a great first move. Now it's second down and 16. And the crowd gets involved, of course, in these long yardage situations. They come with a blitz this time, and the pass is caught by Smith. And Smith is going to be close to a first down. Taking people with him. What a play by Keith Smith inside the 20-yard line to the 19. And a first down for the Boilermakers. Well, we talked about the lopsided nature of the plays expected from this Oregon defense. And now you see John Boyette, Talmadge Jackson the third, just being taken for a ride. Right now, Purdue just wants it more. Elliott pump fake. Now he throws, throws it away. Had a man, had Valentine down inside the 10-yard line. You know, more bad news for the Oregon Ducks is that Spencer Pacinger, not at the ball game right now. He has an injured elbow. We don't know the extent of the injury, but he is not on the field right now. And that really hurts the Ducks. And Pacinger is a tough guy. He's a guy who's played through a lot of injury in the past, leg injuries to be exact, last year. And that's why we're seeing Bryson Littlejohn, the junior college transfer, at the will linebacker position for Oregon. And he's a pretty good player. A very inexperienced Pacinger, the big time defender for the Ducks. They need it. Second down and 10, and it seems to me there's a little bit of confusion here as to what the play is. Golden, not quite sure where he's supposed to be. Elliott trying to direct traffic. And here's Elliott. He's got room to run, but he throws for Valentine and he overthrew him. So that play was busted in about 18 different ways. But Elliott had plenty job. of room. A great so job by Ralph Bolden getting around and picking up the blitz there. Let's go down to the sideline. Michael Eves. Michael, you're near the Oregon bench. What's going on over there? Yeah, Barry, there's a lot of dejected, frustrated, disappointed faces on these Oregon offensive players. Chip Kelly, some of the other offensive coaches just pleading with the guy, said, you've got to find it. We've got to find your intensity. We've got to come back and win this game. We can't do it if you guys don't play better. Well put. Third down and 10 now, the big play offensively right here. The ball just inside the 19-yard line. Again, the Ducks show blitz. They give him a handoff. Quick hitter to Bolden. Bolden gets inside the 10-yard line. First down. What a great call. He stepped right through John Boyette. And let me tell you something. He ended up going down. Watch the tight end, number 85, Kyle Adams, with the block. And you see Bolden. He's playing at a high level. He's picking up blitzes. He's stepping through and just barely this boy at get him down this kid is special this kid is the real deal 17 carries 82 yards now for Ralph Bolden he gives way to Jason Taylor now the ball at the eight yard line first and goal for the Boilermakers give it to Taylor and Taylor angles toward the five yard line will be stopped a little bit short inside the seven just about the six yard line pick up a two it'll be second down and goal now they bring Bolden back and also bring the fullback, Jared Crank. They ran the fullback one time in a situation similar to this, a little further out, and he ran it for about 14 yards in the first half. Second down and goal. They mark it at the seven yard line. And they give it to the full, or the play fake. And now Elliott looking to go the other way, trying to get around. Now he's got a little room. He gets a block. He does. He's at the 10 and goes down right about the line of scrimmage. So much ado about not very much for Elliott. And again, a little bit of confusion. Well, Elliott really turned nothing into nothing on that play, but he made the right decision by not throwing the football down the field. And he thought about it, and that was not a designed pass. He throws that ball, and they get an illegal man downfield because at least three or four of the Purdue offensive linemen had moved on to the second level. Good job staying home by Bryce and Littlejohn and eventually making the play and forcing Elliott down. But a great job by Elliott not throwing the ball. He wanted to, but he shouldn't have, and he didn't. End result, no gain. Third down goal from the seven-yard line. Golden in the backfield. Four-man rush. Elliott throws over the middle. It's caught short of the touchdown by Jeff Lindsay at about the one-yard line. Now what do you do? Well, you're on the road. You're in Autzen Stadium. They're going to go. Your offense is moving. They're bringing in the big fullback, Jared Crank. They're going to try to push Oregon off the ball, and why not? Their offense has momentum. The Oregon defense is tired. 
I believe just told us all the dejection on that Oregon sideline. They're going to try to get this crowd going, but I tell you what, this Purdue offense might have it going more than the crowd. 12th play of the drive at the one-yard line. They line up in the eye with Gold in the tailback. Crank the fullback. They need a yard. And a pitch to Bolden. Bolden dives into the end zone. He got there for a touchdown, but a flag is down right on the goal line. Oh, he earned it, too. What a whack he took. Now we'll see about the penalty, however. And it would appear that this is going to negate the touchdown. But we'll see. Looked like a well-executed play by Purdue and a nice call to try to work the perimeter after they've no been working the middle. foul on the play. Touchdown. Well, there you are. The officials meet, do exactly the right thing, discuss what it was, decide it's not a penalty after all, and it's six points for Danny Hope and the Purdue Boilermakers. A great lead block by the fullback, Jared Crank, there. And Bolden did what he had to do to get into the end zone, sacrificed his body, and dove into the big hit from Kenny Rowe. Yes, he did. 194 pounds, but he, he's the hitter as much as he's the hit he's five foot nine, so it's all packed in there. Drive for point is up and good, and the Boilermakers have gone out in front by seven. It's Purdue 24 and the Oregon Ducks 17. Eight minutes, 24 seconds remaining, and watch Bolden take a shot and still get in. The O. So once again, the Boilermakers will kick it away. It's Carson Wiggs who will do the kicking. There's the man who scored the touchdown. And he has come up huge once again. And here's a little pooch kick. Thurman runs up, takes it at the 25 yard line, and slips to about the 39. Here's another look at the score, Pete. Well, here comes Jared Crank, number 48 at the fullback position. You're going to see him bear down with that fantastic block right there. And that's what springs the play. And that's Boyette that puts that ridiculous hit on Ralph Bolden. Too little and too late. Here's Masoli on a screen this time. And that's Holland on the receiving end. And he gets it to about the 46-yard line, a gain of seven. He was knocked around like a pinball. Kawan Short makes the stop. The Oregon offense is just sputtered. This time, a give to Crenshaw. Crenshaw tries a left side. Not much. About a yard. It's going to be third and short. Well, the first and ten line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with the company that supports college football. Overstock.com at home with the O. Third down and two. This time they come off the edge and it's Masoli on the keeper going right where the man came from. To the 40, 35, 30 and out of bounds. Right play, right read, right time. Eight of 23. Well, Jason Werner really bought the fake, and that's what sprung Masoli. And we've seen these moments of brilliance on the ground from Jeremiah Masoli and this Oregon offense, but they've been too few and far between right now, and they've got to find their rhythm, and they've got to find their passion. And they've got to stay on the field and give their defense a rest. First down at the 30-yard line. give this time is to Crenshaw again. Crenshaw gets by two. Inside the 30, the 29. Just not seeing a great deal of confidence from any of these Oregon running backs again. But Garrett Blunt, the man expected to carry the load for the Ducks all year. Juan Short making a big tackle on Andre Crenshaw. And Michael James and Crenshaw and Barner, these guys have got to step up and say, this is my job. Now it's Barner in the backfield with Masoli. Second down and eight. Masoli going to throw. Blitz comes. Masoli throws underneath. Almost intercepted. Torrey Williams almost had it. 
Barner was the intended receiver, and Werner was coming right up the gut in Mazzoli's face. Well, that's a tall order for Kenyon Barner. Here he is, started out as a defensive back, moved a running back into fall, and he's expected to recognize Blitz, turn, and show Mazzoli his numbers. It was the right read by Jeremiah Mazzoli, but Kenyon Barner didn't see it, and the Ducks are lucky that ball didn't get picked. Now it's third and eight. Masoli straight back again through a screen, and that was well read by the Boilermakers. There was no chance. Torrey Williams had that play all sniffed out. It was intended for David Paulson, but Paulson had no chance. So it'll be fourth down and eight, and this would be about a 46-yard field goal effort. Morgan Flint, the kicker. This crowd getting a little bit impatient with the hometown Ducks. Used to seeing a lot of offense here, Barry. That's true. It's on its way, and it is wide right. So David Pender, who almost blocked that, did force the kick to be pushed. And the Ducks come up empty. Mike and I were just talking, in your new role, have you decided where you want to be during the game, either up in your suite or down here on the field? Well, I, I haven't figured it out, to tell you the truth, and it's tough. I was on the field before the game, and I just felt very comfortable there. Had to go up to talk to some boosters and donors before the game, then came back down for this. I, I don't really don't know. I'm going to play it by ear. As we see Purdue trying to move the ball here on offense, we talked about the struggles that this Ducks offense had had last week against Boise State and somewhat tonight here uh, against Purdue. Seems like the running back, the running game, Masoli's moving the ball as a runner, but you re really need your running back to step up. We do, and it starts at the line of scrimmage. we got to do a better job on both sides. Offensively, you know, sustaining some blocks and giving the, the running backs a chance to get started. Jeremiah's done a great job and really ran the ball himself. Defensively, we got to go a bit better pass for us because they're, they're running hard and making some plays. Always a coach, but he's got some AD jobs as well, guys. A lot of construction on campus, new baseball field, new basketball field, and also an academic learning center. He's a busy guy, no question about it. The ball is loose, and the Ducks are after it. Nobody still has control of it now. It's picked up, and going into the end zone for an Oregon touchdown is Jameis Lewis. What a break for the Ducks, 26 yards, and the score off the football. Second defensive touchdown for the Oregon Ducks. Duck faithful going, and that'll drive Danny Hope, an offensive coordinator for Purdue, Gary Nord, crazy. Interceptions and a fumble where the ball gets kicked out and bounces around. Purdue's offense has played great in this game, but they're not going to be able to overcome this kind of mistakes in this stadium. So this to tie. And it is up and good. We're tied at 24 with five minutes and six seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. This one never really got started. Elliott couldn't find a handle. It was kicked around two different Oregon Ducks. Finally, Lewis picks it up. 26 yards and a touchdown, and we're tied. Sometimes it feels like you'll never find... Gets the 10, got a little gap. And is stopped as he crossed the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Time Carlos goes to the far side and Valentine to the near side. Ball at the 25 yard line. Play fake. Elliott can throw, steps up, does throw, and it's knocked down and almost intercepted by Michael Clay. Well, there's a few too many defenders in that area to throw the ball and two wide receivers Smith and Valentine in the area looks like another miscommunication for Purdue offensively and the crowd's getting going and this defense is getting going which is amazing because after scoring two touchdowns themselves this Oregon defense has been out on the field way too long 29 of the last 38 plays the defense has been on the field 
And here's a handoff inside to Bolden. And a pickup of about two, and it's going to be third and eight. Brandon Bear on the D-line for the Ducks makes the stop. You think about what this Oregon defense has been able to do. This is a tied football game in a very tenuous situation right now for both teams, but two touchdowns. Nick Aliotti's defense has kept Oregon in this football game. No question. Elliott checking off here on third and long. And the crowd now really involved. Elliott straight back in trouble. Steps away from it, buys some time. Now he's going to run, but all he can do is get out of bounds short of the first down. He took a pretty good shot on the way as well. Be about a yard short of the first down. And the Bordermakers are going to have to give it back to the Ducks. Eddie Pleasant ran him out. And it wasn't pleasant. No, not for Elliott. He made a pretty good effort for the stick there. It didn't look like he was going to get anywhere near, but he was about a yard short of the first down of that situation. A good job by Pleasant bearing down on him and making sure he didn't get to that stick. And that was a huge third down for the Oregon defense. Chris Summers on to do the punting. He'll be kicking to Thurman. And he drives this one pretty good, too. It's got to get Thurman all the way back to about the 15-yard line. Juggles it. Now he gets going. Tried to step to the outside. Was one man away from really making that into a big run. Stopped at about the 28. A 50-yard punt and a 13-yard return by Walter Thurman the third. Adam Wolf made what might have been a saving tackle. Well, we talked about what the Oregon defense has been able to do to keep them involved in this football game. There's Walter Thurman the third with that pick, and then fumbled snap, ball kicks up. There's Lewis to pick it up and take it to the house, playing that rover position that was made famous by Patrick Chung here for so many years at Oregon. Now Javis Lewis picking up where Chung has left off, making big plays. Solely going to throw, does, Mail makes the catch. But, you know, we talk about the Oregon offense kind of sputtering. But well, they've only had four plays that have allotted for most of their yardage, 128, 36 other plays, only 85 yards. The Oregon offense, I guess, haphazard, sputtering, stop and start, lack of identity, lack of rhythm. That's how you describe it right now. Let's see what they can get going here. They've got some momentum that their defense has given them. Gain of four on first down. It'll be second and six. James is the running back now. And this is James. And James pops it, tries to get to the outside and have a first down across the 40 to the 41 yard line. He's got quick feet, I'll say that. Keon Brown on the stop for the Boilermakers. James is just a freshman. Five foot nine, 180 pounds, Texarkana, Texas. Last week, only two carries, but somebody's got to step up. Well, here he is coming the other way. Now he cuts it back up the middle and picks up about seven more. And Jason Warner makes the stop. Very quick off the ball is the freshman with Michael James. Two carries for 15 yards the last two plays. Second down at four. The solely going to throw. Has all day to throw. Now he finds a man. It's caught by Paulson, the tight end. And Paulson has a first down at the 42-yard line of Purdue. You see how fast Oregon's going right now. They need to keep up this pace and keep the Purdue defense on their heels. Nice blitz pickup that time by LaMichael James. Not even a blitz. He was blocking Mike Neal, 302 pounds of him. Here's James again. James stutter step now tries to bounce to the outside. Stiff arms a man into the open. 30 to the 25 to the 20. Down inside the 15 yard line. Ball pops loose. But I think they're going to send the ground across it. A pickup of 28. For the Michael James. And here is the tailback play that they've been waiting to see in Onsen Stadium. Filling in for LeGarrette Blunt. LaMichael James now with about four straight, very positive plays for the Oregon offense. And you saw the burst of speed he had. Almost outran David Pender there. Barner in now at the running back spot. The ball at the 15-yard line. Masoli gives the Barnard, but Barrera keeps it himself and takes it to the outside and into the end zone for an Oregon touchdown. And that 
is about as effective a drive as Oregon has had this season. They love it at Autzen Stadium. It's because they finally had a tailback step up. If you're going to run option, if you're going to run the quarterback, you have to have another threat in that backfield. And that threat came in the form of Michael James on that drive and a great job by Jeremiah Masoli. We know he can run the ball. Great wherewithal to find the end zone. Six plays, 72 yards. Took a minute and 48 seconds. James, three carries for 42 of those yards. And just like that, the Oregon Ducks are in front, 31 to 24. Here's another look. Well, the option read play. Masoli makes the absolute correct read and then is able to use a block. And it put it right in the belly of Barnard to start. Very good job with the ball, almost like Steve DeBerg. And you see the whole left side just suck in and buy the fake to Barner, like you were talking about, Barry. Just great fake with the ball. And Barner could have taken him himself, too. Seems like that was a pretty good hole for him. But Masoli keeps it. And that's the right read. Uses the block perfectly and takes it to the house. I think that was Dixon, the tight end, who gave him that block and a key block down at the goal line. And now the crowd is involved. And guess what? What was a beautiful night, 85 degrees in Bali, and it's raining here in Eugene. And I mean not just a little bit. It's like the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune right now for the Purdue Boilermakers. They played so well in this game, but the turnovers have caught up to them. Well, it would be Eugene if it didn't rain, would it? The Ducks have stolen the momentum, and now the weather is cooperating with them. Pick headed for Valentine at the six-yard line. Jones the football, now he picks it up. Tries to get the outside, and gets a little something out of nothing to the 23. One of the interesting thing is, though, Jeremiah Masoli, very uncomfortable playing in the rain, had a terrible game in the rain against Cal last year in Berkeley. And I mean, it is pouring. Well, you can tell, it is pouring right now. And there is a little lightning around, too, so that's going to be interesting. Here's what happened at the Pac-10 Conference. USC had to come from behind to beat Ohio State and Horseshoe, UCLA. Huge win for Rick New Highs on the Bruins back at Rocky Top. Cal easy over Eastern Washington. Wake Forest had to come from 17-3 to down to beat Stanford. Washington, first win since 07. Hawaii goes to Seattle and beats Washington State. Arizona easy over Northern Arizona. And this game right here showing the Oregon Ducks leading the Purdue Boilermakers 31 to 24. Gives straight ahead to pick up of about five on first down for Ralph Bolden. And I like that play call by Gary Nord. I tell you what, Ralph Bolden is the guy that can quiet this crowd if they keep it on the ground and use the I formation that they've been using with a lot of success in this football game. Purdue can really beat up on that Oregon defense who's had a lot of snaps in the last couple weeks and kind of take the air out of the football. And a lot of ebb and flow in this game. You can see the leaders changed hands six times. You got a couple of ties. Ducks have momentum right now, trying to keep it. Elliott throws the screen underneath. Bolden still on his feet, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, gets across midfield to the 46 yard line. What an effort by Ralph Bolden. Bolden did a good job becoming a tripod there and using his hand, spinning on that hand and getting the ball upfield. Great play and just a very explosive back as Ralph Bolden. Very impressive in this game. Now the rain has subsided just a little bit here. And the game is to Bolden again. Bolden was really cracked after the rain of about two. Casey Matthews gave him a real shot right as he got to the 45-yard line. And now Bolden has reached the 100-yard mark. 23 carries, 100 yards, a couple of scores. He leaves. Jason Taylor comes back into the Purdue line. Second down and eight. Elliott gives the Taylor straight ahead, not much, about a yard. And it's going to be third down and seven, and that may be the last play of the third quarter. Yeah. Kenny Rowe on the tackle for the Ducks. As the clock winds down, the third quarter comes to an end, and we got 15 minutes of football left, and this game is still right up there on the tee, waiting for somebody to take it. Oregon right now has the lead, 31 to 24. Three quarters of this football game are in the books. Still one quarter to play. The Ducks with the last two scores, one on the defense, one on the offense, have taken the lead by seven. 31-24, fourth quarter coming up right after this commercial word. Don't go away.
sets amongst the top ten. Big win for Houston today. And the give and into the open goes Bolden and Bolden with a first down and much more to the 27-yard line. Bolden on the carry. John Boyd on the initial tackle. Let's take a look at the eHarmony statistics through the first three quarters. Oregon 161 rushing yards, Purdue 125, comparable numbers. Passing yardage, though, much in favor of Purdue, 198 to 124. But Oregon, two defensive touchdowns. Gain of 17 for Bolden on that last play. Now both Bolden and Taylor in the backfield. First down at the 27-yard line. And it gives us to Bolden. And Bolden will get about five. Down about the 22. Bolden picks up about five. Well, the 22. Purdue hadn't quite taken the momentum back in this football game, but they've at least made it a stalemate again with Ralph Bolden, giving the ball to their star and moving the ball down the field and kind of taking the air out of everything because of Ralph Bolden. And it's quiet in this Autzen Stadium crowd a little bit. Incidentally, Paisinger back in the ball game for the Ducks were playing with a, a big wrap on his elbow. Second down and five. Now they have to throw. Has time. Throws. Bolden up the middle. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Boilermakers. 22 yards, and that was a thing of beauty. It was a beautiful drive. Purdue's about to tie this game up. If I told you Purdue went into Autzen and gave up two defensive touchdowns to Oregon, and was tied in the fourth quarter, you wouldn't believe me, but it's mostly because of the poise of Ralph Bolden and Joey Elliott, who's thrown a couple picks, but he's been pretty sharp in his football game. Ralph Bolden is a special player. Really showing it here. He's got about 120 yards rushing. Makes that catch for a 22-yard touchdown. The drive for point is blocked. And that could be a huge factor in this game. Well, I guess I spoke too soon when I said they were going to tie it. So that will take the edge off of that. Here's the touchdown right over the middle. And Bolden just headed straight for the end zone. And the extra point. We'll pick up the blocker. We're coming Nightmare. <laughs> James going to be the deep man to receive this kick. First time he's been back there tonight. He'll handle it at the one yard line. Comes back from 10 and is stopped right as he crossed the 20 yard line. So there was joy and then there was sadness for the Purdue Boilermakers. Here's the joy. Well, here's Bolden. He's just going to run a Texas route. That's an old school play. Well delivered right in front of the numbers by Elliott. And Bolden knows exactly what's to do, what to do. And here you're going to see Clark and just puts his hand up right at the opportune moment. Trajectory of the ball a little low. And there you see the right hand coming up. And that is number 99, Zach Clark. A hero right now. Giving the Ducks a one-point lead. Blitz comes, pass complete to Holland. And a great open field tackle that time. Prevented a really big play. Nice tackle by David Pender. And we're coming to the Blitz. Second down, we'll call it three. It says two, but it's really closer to three. And to give this time is to Bolden. And Bolden, a lot of James Crenshaw. I'll get it right. It's one of their three running backs, I can tell you that. Like I said, number is very hard to tell. But Crenshaw picks up about seven yards to about the 39-yard line. And this is what we were talking about, Barry, when we were talking about competition within the tailback position right now on the field where it counts. LaMichael James step up, and now Andre Crenshaw stepping up. Masoli, pump fake, now he's going to go downfield. Got high and wide up, he dropped it. That was six. Especially with the speed of Jameer Holland, he catches that ball. The electricity he has in his legs, no one was going to catch him. He ran right by David Pender, who bought the fake. And that's the inconsistency that Jameer Holland has, thrown throughout, has shown throughout his career. And to give this time is to Crenshaw, the right side. Crenshaw is going to get about two, maybe three. 
First and 10 line brought to you by Overstock. Overstock.com. At Overstock.com, our award-winning customer service will make you feel at home with the O. Third down and seven. Missoli throws a quick screen nail. Makes the catch, has a first down there. Almost slipped the final tackle. First down inside the 45 yard line. Chris Carlino hanging on for deep in life to save what might have been a touchdown. Well, we told you Jeff Mayo was going to break this game open in the first half, and he almost pulled it off right there. You saw that long stride. He's pretty fast. Benshaw remains the setback. And this is Masoli on the keep, and a blade of grass jumped up and got it. Just underway in the final period, 11.53 remaining to be played in the ball game. Started off as a sunny, beautiful evening. Well, it wasn't a sunny evening. That would be, that would be <laughs> difficult, wasn't it? But a warm, toasty warm evening. Now it's raining. Gary Tompkins, Petros Papadakis. Michael Eves telling you about it. Here's Masoli on a quick cross, too tall this time. Intended for Holland. Now it's third down, nine. Chip Kelly's talked to us in the past about how he doesn't like playing offense too much in the rain. Well, you're here at Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. It's going to rain, and they've got to find a comfort zone with this rain. Again, Jeremiah Masoli really struggled in the rain against Cal last year in Berkeley, California. Third down and nine. Blitz comes. And Masoli in wholesale retreat. He's dropped all the way back at the 45-yard line by Joe Holland. Second sack of the ball game. Well, Joe Holland was kind of forced into action last year as a freshman and admitted he's a bit confused last year. He doesn't look confused at all on this play getting his hands on Jeremiah Masoli, and that's not easy to do because Masoli's very shifty. He tried to pull a spin move on him. Great job by Joe Holland sticking with it, watching Masoli's belt buckle and getting it down. So Barrett comes on to punt, tries to kick it away from Valentine. Valentine calls for a fair catch and makes it at about the 12-yard line. So Boilermakers, after a 43-yard punt, no return, will have the ball at about the 13-yard line. They trail by one. We're coming back. This is the... Down, Bolden taking a huge hit on a touchdown. Bolden again, really doing a great job covering up the football, but that young man has taken a lot of punishment. There's been a lot doled out here in Autzen Stadium, Rich Brooks Field. I'll start at the 13-yard line. Painter going to throw, has to unload, it does to the tight end, Adams makes the catch, shakes a tackle, gets a first down, and goes out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. Nice effort by Kyle Adams. Right now, time for a game summary brought to you by DirecTV. Well, Bolden and Purdue, three touchdowns, a couple of rushes, he's run for almost 120 yards. Oregon, two defensive touchdowns, one by Thurman, one by Lewis. The lead has changed hands six times. We've had a couple of ties. And it ain't over yet. Well, we've seen Chip Kelly's offense look like Chip Kelly's offense, but the real difference is the two defensive touchdowns by the Ducks. Inside hand off to Bolden, spins out of one tackle and gets something where there really wasn't very much. Got almost three yards. It's going to be second down and seven. Can't say enough about how impressed I am with Ralph Bolden in this football game. Again, just a sophomore. This kid is carrying the load on the road, long trip, hostile stadium. First it was hot, now it's raining, and he's just kept on bringing it into the line of scrimmage and really taking it upon himself to carry this Purdue offense here in the waning moments of the game. I like what Danny Hope said about making a long trip. He said, hey, we flew. We didn't walk. Most of the guys were asleep on the plane, he said. Isn't that hard? Second down seven. Blitz off the edge. Elliott throws underneath. And it's incomplete intended for Adams, who paid the price. Casey Matthews making sure Adams is not going to make that catch. There you see Joey Elliott still fiery, still leading the team, still encouraging his teammates. 
pretty impressed with the senior here. Him and his fellow seniors came up with a motto for the entire Purdue program for this season called One Opportunity Now Everyone. They've really kind of lived it. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Well, this would be really a hallmark win for them. Coming out here, a very tough place to play for a visiting team. They're very much in it. They trail that point. Big play here, third down seven. Elliott rolls to his right, steps up, throws. Got a man open, and unable to make the catch was Keith Smith. Defended by Walter Thurman, who I think might have distracted Smith just enough. He might have. It might have been the crowd noise. Again, Purdue practiced all week. Talking about Autzen Stadium, they had music pumping into their practice field, crowd noise pumping into their practice field, and this place is, I know from first-hand experience, very disconcerting, and when you make a mistake, ball bounces off your hands like it did there for Keith Smith. It can really get you down. That crowd noise really drains you. So, this time, the punt by Carson Riggs that had been Summers who'd been doing the punt, and it's a short punt. Going to go out of bounds at about the 45 yard line. Well, they kicked it like that for Wiggs to keep the ball away from Walter Thurman the third, but it kind of backfired that. Well, we talked to Denny Hope about how he prepared for this game, and you just mentioned he prepared with loud music. Well, we practiced at night some to try to make a difference in, in the time. We uh, practiced last night around the same time the game's going to be played our time. We practiced uh, uh, from 9 to about 11 o'clock last night. And then we also had big giant speakers brought in and had crowd noise and music. Well, it was blasting right behind the offense. My ears are still ringing right now from the last two practices, but we spent uh, time practicing with noise and then obviously practicing in the evening. Well, James shakes a tackle. Was going to be stopped for loss and instead turns it into plus seven. We were calling for it. LaMichael James or one of these backs to take over the football game or at least take over that position. Here comes a blitz. James going the other way. Look out. James stutter steps inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. A big first down. And James has come alive. You hear the Autzen Stadium crowd, the Duck faithful, responding to the freshman tailback, LaMichael James, and the way he's played in the second half of this football game. The Oregon offense starting to look like Chip Kelly's Oregon offense, and that's because they finally started st sustaining blocks, like Mike Bellotti told Michael Eaves, and the running backs are running with some, some fervor. Barner in now at the running back spot. Pump fake. Masoli going to roll to his right. He had tough play. Room to run. Instead, he finds a wide open receiver. Mail on the sideline. And he's not knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line. He was wide open. And they're starting to get the production they need to take over this football game as Oregon's threatening. Jeff Mail stepping up. And it's a 13-yard line. First down at the 13-yard line for the Oregon Ducks. Barner remains the running back. Eight minutes, 13 seconds remaining in the game. Masoli on the keeper, steps out of a tackle, still on his feet, and finally dropped for about a yard loss on the play. Mike Neal stayed with him. Jeremiah Masoli has shown some limitations in the first couple games this year under his new head coach, Chip Kelly, but I tell you what. <laughs> Barner remains the running back. He comes in motion. And whistles blow. Somebody might have moved prematurely. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, number 42. Five yard penalty, second down. David Paulson, tight end, the guilty party. And in the first half, Oregon had a real hard time responding when they had negative plays like that, penalties that really killed a lot of their drives. Let's see what they do here and how they respond. Chris Masoli 
Knight tries to bounce it outside. He is surrounded and runs out of bounds. For another loss on the play back at the 23-yard line, Joe Holland stand right with him. Good job defensively by the Boilermakers to just string that play out. So third down now and 19. Masoli gives this time to Barner. Barner got a little gap up the middle at the 10, at the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Ducks. Probably the biggest play of the ball game. Now they were concerned about their depth at running back, so they moved Kenyon Barner from a defensive back into the backfield and that was a fantastic run and we're seeing that competition now materialize a great run great ability to get through and pick through that purdue defense and score and oregon's starting to feel it starting to step up starting to understand the importance of this football game flint the try for point drives it through it is a 38 to 30 oregon lead six minutes 42 minutes remaining in the ball game and Austin stadium is alive. So Beard will kick it off, kicking to Adams and Valentine. Short, high, end of a end kick. Valentine runs up, takes it at the 18 yard line. Gets a little gap, gets through to the 30 and about the 31 yard line. And we go to the sideline report sponsored by FreeCreditReport.com and Mike Leaves. Yeah, Barry, you're talking about how big that play was. The emotion on this Oregon Ducks sideline went through the roof after that touchdown. Guys were doing flying chest bumps, and I'm not just talking about the players. Scott Frost and some of the other assistant coaches getting in on the flying chest bumps. However, on the other side of the field, those Purdue coaches are going up and down the line, reminding their guys we have plenty of time and plenty of timeouts. It's only an eight-point lead. They can score get a two-point conversion to tie this game up. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. That's Michael Leaves on the sideline all night. You got some coaches doing chest bumps on the sideline. That means their first team all chest bump. <laughs> That's right. Elliott rolls out, rolls into pressure, steps away from it. Now he throws, and the ball's caught for a big game by Keith Carlos all the way up at the 45 yard line. Pick up a 15 on first down. Nice job by Elliott. A lot of courage with the football by Joey Elliott. Will Tukuafu really putting some pressure on him. if they keep it on the ground here with Ralph Holden. Time not a factor at all, 622. Starting to get the feeling that the Oregon Ducks are realizing the importance of this game. I don't want to say this is a must-win situation, but Utah coming in next and a brand-new head coach. They've got to step up. And to give the Bolden nothing doing. Not a loss to yard. Speaking of the Utes, they were at halftime playing at San Jose with the San Jose State Spartans, who were losers last week. 56 to 3, it's tied at 7 at the half. We've had wild games all day up and down the Pac-10 conference and all over college football, and this one is just as wild as any we've seen. I mean, with two defensive touchdowns, block PAT, the Oregon offense finally coming to life, the Oregon defense showing a great deal of courage and resiliency hanging in there. It's great. Second down, 11. Elliott steps up, now he throws, and it is caught by Valentine, and that's going to be very close to a first down. I believe he got it. We've seen Joey Elliott make some mistakes today, no question about it, but this kid is a fiery leader, and he lives for football. You're going to see him roll up on his own man. That's offensive lineman. That's tough, Zach Jones. What a great play by Elliott, finding Valentine. First down at the 42-yard line of the Ducks. And now a flag comes in. Way back in the backfield. I'm not sure what this is about. The Let's previous see. play is under further review. Going to make sure that ball was caught in bounds. So the booth... 
We'll take a look at this one. And I'm quite sure that's what the discussion is about. Here's another look at it. See Elliott shaking the tackle again. Oh, that was earlier question. in the drive. Oh, that's right. Yes. Play, play earlier in the play. drive. So that was the pass to Carlos, which was a first down. It was the next play and the catch by Valentine on the sideline. Here's the play we're talking about now. Elliott steps up, throws. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's a good catch. Well, it's pretty close either way, and it was called the catch on the field, so I'm not sure if they're going to be able to overturn it. There's Valentine. The feet were in. Feet were in. Maybe one of the knees was out, but it's very close. An important play, actually. We'll see. That's the referee in this game, Jack Foliart. And here's one more look at it. Elliott showing some athleticism, getting rid of that ball, jumping into the air like Randall Cunningham and delivering it. I, I would doubt that they would reverse this. It'd be very difficult to because it seems very close. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Well, the crowd doesn't like it, but I think it's a, a fair decision in the replay booth and by the referee. So it was a gain of 11 yards and a first down at the 42-yard line of the Ducks. Taylor remains the running back. And now goes in motion. And the blitz comes. And the ball was thrown behind Adams. He wasn't looking for it because Elliott had to unload the ball quickly because they were coming up the middle with a blitz. And that's on Adams. There's no one there to pick up that blitz. And Elliott knows he's got to get rid of that ball in a hurry, which he did. You see that blitz coming, and you're a receiver, a back, a tight end, whatever you are. you got to get your head around and look straight at that quarterback. Now it's second down and 10, a tougher situation. I think Purdue needs to get back to Ralph Bolden. Well, Taylor remains in the ball game. Second and 10, here's a blitz off the edge. They give it to Taylor, and Taylor will pick up about three, maybe four yards. And another big third down play upcoming here for the Boilermakers. Eddie Pleasant makes the tackle. Jason Taylor's going to come out, and Ralph Bolden's coming back in. This would be a good spot for a screen. Going to be a tough third down. This crowd's going to get it going. Crowd on its feet here at Oxford Stadium. They've got Carlos to the near side. Smith in the slot to the far side. Third and seven. Bold in the running back. Elliott straight back. Puck fake. Now they run. He's got room. He's got a first down more. 30, 25. And goes down inside the 25 at the 24-yard line. Quick decision by Joey Elliott. The right decision. Well, he saw the linebacker go with Bolden on the swing pass. And the second he saw that linebacker take off, the hole opened up. And Elliott did a great job. He's pretty nifty with his feet. And he curved it right back in there. So a first down inside the 25 at the 24-yard line. Elliott going to pass again. Now he has to roll away from pressure. Now he steps up. Now he's going to run. And he slides down at about the 18-yard line. Elliott, not by nature, a running quarterback. But he picked up about seven. You know, he's not afraid to tuck it, and he doesn't look too awkward running the football. He seems to know where to put it when he runs it. He's no Jeremiah Masoli. No. He did a good job getting down before he took it on the chin. Picked up 21 yards on the last two plays. They give him six on that play, and it's second and four. 
This time they go out of the eye formation with Bolden the tailback. And this is Bolden. He runs into traffic and then he spins away from one man but can't spin away from the other. He's going to lose a couple. And again, it's going to be third and long. And this is four down territory for Purdue. And if you're a Big Ten fan or a Purdue fan and you're already starting to twiddle your thumbs and worry about the two-point conversion play, just know that every football team in the country has those plays in their playbook. They practice it all week. They know what they want to run for a two-point conversion to try to tie this game and push it into overtime. Danny Hope and his offensive coordinator, Gary Nord, know exactly what they want to call in that situation. So what do they call in this situation? Third down and seven, as you said, two down territory. And the crowd, of course, gets into it. Elliott throws underneath. The pass is caught by Bolden. He's going to be short of the first down, I think. It will depend on the spot. I think about a half yard short. And they will certainly go. Well, that was that same Texas route to the other side that Bolden scored a touchdown on in this half for Purdue. Purdue going to call a timeout here with a minute and 53 seconds remaining. They're going to need just about a yard from where they spot it, which is right at the 15-yard line. I think what you're looking at here in this situation is just a blast play. It's a little too far, I think, comfortably for Joey Elliott, the captain of this offense, to run a quarterback sneak. I think you bring in one of the fullbacks that you've been using all day, get in that eye formation, trust Ralph Bolden with the football, get behind your center and your other captain, Jared Swilling, and just blast it right up the middle. It's going to be Taylor, though, and not Bolden, but he does have a fullback in Jared Crank. And Jason Taylor was the guy who ran that original isolation play for Purdue's first touchdown. He might be the better ISO runner, and there you see it. The fullback and the tailback poised for the isolation. Two tight ends out of the eye formation. They need a yard. The pitch to Taylor. He cuts it back. He'll get the first down. Not by a lot, but he'll take it. Well, everybody was thinking ISO. And they did a great job calling a pitch, spread him out a little bit. And you saw the great thing that Jason Taylor did on that play. Put his foot in the ground and got upfield and got the first down. Brilliant play call by Gary North. Ball at the 13-yard line. First down, 140 remaining. Clock not really a factor. Boilermakers need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie. And it's straight back with time. Now he steps up, runs out of time, and he's wrapped up. Back to the 19-yard line. First sack of the ball game. And it was Blake Ferris and Kenny Rowe who converged on Joey Elliott. And just a little too comfortable in the pocket that time was Joey Elliott waiting a little too long. He'd been a little lucky on this drive with his escapability out on the perimeter, but that time Blake Ferris got his hands on him. And Blake Ferris, who had his first start last week, once he gets his hands on you, that's over. Well, our best buy connection tonight, Joey Elliott and the running back Ralph Bolden on a touchdown pass right over the middle, well executed into the end zone for a score. That was the good news, bad news. They missed the conversion, and thus they now need to take it in again and get a two-point conversion. But that is our best buy, best connection. The ball back at the 18-yard line now. It's going to be second and 15, but significantly, they had to use a timeout. So the Boilermakers have only one timeout remaining. A minute and 21 seconds showing on the clock. They go out of the eye formation. Duck show blitz. They back out of it. Now they have to throw. Throws underneath into the hands of Adams and dropped. Wasn't going to gain much, but now a third down and long. In this situation, a draw play, a screen, something underneath, something to the tight end, like the play they just ran. You have to get at least half of the yardage to make it a manageable fourth down situation. You don't have to get the first down here. You just have to get positive yardage. The ball at the 18-yard line. They need 15 for a first down. And they give it straight ahead to Bolden. He doesn't get a lot. Inside the 15 to about the 16. It's going to be fourth down and a long 10. And they're going to use their last time out right here. With a minute and nine seconds. 
and there is no tomorrow. They need 11 on this this play, or it's over. For Chip Kelly, it has been quite a week, quite a journey. Looking for his first win as the head coach at Oregon. Trying to get the blue birds off his shoulder. I tell you what, when he looks back on this football game, win or lose, He's going to think of how great his defense played under all the pressure that they were put under by the offense. Two touchdowns, block PAT. They put Oregon in a great position to win when the offense really struggled in the first half. So here's the ball game right here. 38 to 30, Oregon over Purdue. A minute nine seconds for mid to be played in the game. And they need 11. We gotta get to the three yard line. They go out of the gun. And they try reverse, and they're gonna pass it and into the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown to Aaron Valentine! And there is a play. Keith Smith took it on what looked like it was gonna be a reverse. Threw it into the end zone. Valentine, a leaping catch for the score from 15 yards out. And it ain't over yet. They still need two. And silence is golden right now to call this play. I'm glad I didn't try to predict what Purdue was going to run because I didn't see that coming. An end around and then a throw. And Valentine, who's been pretty clutch all game. Let's see what Purdue has planned in their playbook for the two-point conversion. We're going to go out of the eye formation. Bolden the tailback. He'll line up behind Jared Crank. Two tight ends. Power formation. Smith comes in motion. Elliott rolls out. Looks to the end zone. Throws to the back of the end zone. Adams makes the catch. No catch. There is no four-side rule. And even though Adams caught the ball, he was out of bounds. And the Ducks... Lead it by two with a minute and one second remaining. Elliott showed good patience, but maybe a little too much patience, waiting for Kyle Adams to come open, and it just one step too late. Adams making that catch, seemingly out of bounds. Coaching staff all on the field. Here's another look at it. Really floats it up there and drops it in. But clearly, I, I, I'm certain his foot was out of bounds. Now, in years past, that could have been considered a force out. Let's take another look at it here. He's got the ball secured, and there it is. You see the left toes come down clearly out of bounds. Great call by the officials. Great look by the guys in the truck. And Oregon holds on once again by the skin of their teeth because of their defense. Their defense has bailed them out in this football game all the way through. Here's another look at it. Really floating it up there. The Oregon secondary does not give up on the play. John Boyette forcing him out. And there's Chip Kelly tasting that win. But let's go back to a game earlier today between Central Michigan and Michigan State. With less time than this, Central Michigan missed a two-point conversion try, Nothing. tried an onside kick, Nothing got the onside me. kick, <laughs> kicked the field goal, but was yeah, that was no good. But a penalty allowed them a second chance. They kicked the field goal and won the game. So stranger things have happened. And they, Absolutely, they've happened they have. only hours ago. So this will be the onside kick. It's going to be Carson Wiggs who will kick it. There is the kick. It's in the air. And I don't know. Let's see who got it. The Ducks got it. Well, the official signal that the Ducks had it. Now there's a scramble, but I'm quite sure this decision will stay. And yes, it will be Oregon ball. The Oregon coaches are quick to come out on the field and get their guys back onto the sideline. Emotions running high in a hands team situation. And Purdue jumping up and down saying, we have it, we have it. The officials are still saying it's Oregon ball. The first, the first, the first ball. See, Chip Kelly talking to Keith Smith a little bit. With the frustration of Danny Hope. Yeah, tough loss for Danny Hope. 
team came here, they were not afraid. They played with a lot of courage. They showed a lot of good things. I think Ralph Bolden is a star. Joey Elliott is a, a fitting captain offensively for this Purdue team, but ultimately blocked PAT and two defensive touchdowns by the Ducks. That's tough to overcome in this place. Almost impossible. So Masoli will just take a knee. Take Purdue cannot stop the clock again. Masoli going to have to do this one more time. And a little woofing going on. Of course, Oregon wants no part of that based on the incidents of last week up in Boise. Second half for Oregon. Uh, the offense really starting to show something. The young running backs. I think that was the key. Masoli's always going to run the football. Masoli's always going to compete. And he's got a live arm, and he can find receivers. But LaMichael James, Andre Crenshaw, and Kenyon Barber, Barner with that last touchdown. A really great job by the Oregon backs to step up in the second half. So that's going to do it. Oregon's going to escape here with a 38-36 to win. A tough loss, to be sure, for the Purdue Boilermakers. The two coaches at the center of the field meet two first-year coaches. And you know we're going to hear a lot more from both these guys. They are both uh, very, very astute on the offensive side of the football. And Chip Kelly has got to feel like a 200-ton weight has been lifted off his shoulders getting a victory here in Autzen Stadium. His first victory as head coach for the Ducks. All right, let's take it out of the field. Mike Leaves, Michael. All right, guys, thanks a lot, Chip. Emotional week, to say the least. Can you describe your emotions getting your first win as a head coach and also for your team to be able to come back and win this game here at home? I'm just excited, and it shows what this team's all about. You know, our kids fought back. We played a lot of young players today. Kenyon Barner just made a great play kind of there to finish it. We had a lot of freshmen playing on defense. Uh, Purdue is a heck of a football team. Danny Hope does a great job with them. You know, we're just happy to get one. How about the effort of your defense tonight two times they return a turnover for a score to keep you in the game and then enable your offense later to be able to get that rhythm and start that running game awesome and that's it you know our, our defense it, it, you know they scored twice on defense today you know all i know is we talk about all the time when walter thurman scores a touchdown we're undefeated so i felt pretty good when he took that first one back and how about the biggest play of the game that two-point conversion defense that was a great job you know they, they had a good play called you know fortunately he was out of bounds so Congratulations, Chip, on your first win. All right, thanks. Go celebrate with style. These fans here are really excited as Purdue comes two points short of upsetting Oregon here at Austin Stadium. 38-36 was the final. Came down to the wire. We're coming back with more at Austin Stadium.